Okay, people, welcome to the Blind Sense Podcast. I'm Mike, your, well, host, <laughs> and this is my co-host. Morris, you're the wizard, I'm the bard. This is how this works. This is how this works, yes. <laughs> we, anyways, we skipped the day we were going to do this, partially because it's hot outside, my air conditioning's still not in, so if you hear birds ooh, tweeting, ooh. like... I'm well. You got central air. That's totally cheating, dude. Yeah, I just turn it on. That's good. <laughs> well, after I remove the cover off the air conditioner, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we we are responding to a question this episode, I guess, right? Well, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I, I've been. I'm always on the positive message boards. Uh, my name is Volantrix One on there. If anybody has any questions, but uh, I'm also a blind gamer, so I had some. Questions about hey, how do you blind the Lantrix one when you're blind? How do you, how do you blind? How you blind while you game? <laughs> how you blind when you're game? Yes. So how do you game when you're blind? So we're gonna try to answer that today. So I suppose we should do the thing, right, Lawrence? All righty. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, people people just accosting you on the, the site, asking about how do you game while blind? Is that what's going on? Well, I've been recently involved in uh, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition discussion where, from what it seems like, they want to use a bunch of icons for a lot of the action types and that sort of thing in the system. So it's like, oh, this is an icon. This means one action. So I got into basically a discussion about that, where it's like, I didn't like that because I couldn't read the thing. Because icons for blind people suck, in case anybody didn't realize that. Um, and to be frank, I mean, there's not a lot of us blind gamers out there, but there are a few that have also sighted problems as well. So I want to try to, you know, I want, I want Paizo to basically recognize that, hey, we do have blind people out there gaming, and I want them to... Not necessarily cowtail to my whims or whatever, but, you know, I'd like to make it, you know, accessible for me as well as anybody else that might come along. And frankly, the blind market is untapped, so I think you could get a lot of blind people to play this game, especially a lot of people that went blind after, you know, a while with, you know, they used to play video games or whatever in the past. They can't do it anymore. You can still play pen and paper. That's the great thing about it. But I, uh, while I was on there, they a bunch of people referred uh, a new guy that was basically going blind from the same thing I had, which is uh, diabetic retinopathy. Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever it's called. But anyways, it's di diabetic retinopathy, which basically your retinas start pulling away from your eyeball. You can't see. Him. I have the same thing. He's basically going to this point. So I figured I'd try to answer some of his questions that he PM'd me with. So. And to also make it more accessible for anybody else that wants to see it. Yeah, so it's not just your typical tantrum where it's like, no, no, Paizo, you will kowtow to me, for I am one one lonely consumer who's telling you exactly what I want, and you will listen to me because it's not like there's thousands of others that will take my place. Right. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, to be fair, I've noticed that I'm one of the few blind people I know that still games, but that's in my area. I don't know. You might get more if you actually, you know, tell people about this sort of thing. So, we met a blind guy who runs a game shop. Spoilers for yeah. potential oh, later episode <laughs> in Pittsburgh, by the way. Yeah, so he was a pretty good. He was a pretty cool, dude. Um, he sold me a bunch of stuff. In fact, so there you go. I bought a bunch of stuff off of him. Probably a bunch of stuff I didn't need just because he was cool. But yeah. <laughs> But yeah, there's 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 a few you know well people with just sighted problems. You know, anything that would make it easier for people with sighted you know because the older you get, gamers get old you know and they eventually start having eye problems as well. So anything that would make that easier or simpler for them is also a benefit to 
the rest of the community because, hey, they can still contribute. They can still participate. That makes it better for them. Anyways, but anyways, he, he messaged me. Um, he wanted to know what, you know, how I do certain things. So like, how do I deal with a carriage? Well, with that, I actually use my own character sheet. Um, I built my own on Microsoft Word, which, so I can put as much stuff in there as I want. I can put a lot. Well, I was like, hey, this is, this use a constitution model. Or this uses whatever. I can write all that stuff down on a sheet, whereas on like a main character sheet, can't do that. Oh, uh, I probably should say in order to do this, I use a, a specific program, which is called JAWS. Uh, it's made by Freedom Scientific. Basically lets you read any kind of text-based things that are on the internet, on PDFs, um, uh, websites, that sort of thing. To be fair, all this stuff must be OCR, which is optical character recognition software. So it allows you know the system to read that. So if that's not ingrained into the system, it won't read it. But I mean, I've only encounter, encountered one out of a thousand maybe websites that don't have that. Uh, PDFs are a bit different. And now they're almost always OCR, all Paizo stuff is OCR corrected. Thank you, Paizo. I really appreciate that. That's one of the reasons I love you, <laughs> uh, which is why I don't want you to go to those symbols things. But yeah, because um, you did the symbol things in Starfinder, and it aggravates me to no end. Because <laughs> it aggravated more than just <laughs> you. It's, he's well, trying to describe things to me. I'm like, I don't, I don't know how this works. <laughs> well, see, at least you'd be able to figure it out. I couldn't. Like, so, it'll read, it'll tell so, me there's a symbol there. Oh, so, there's a symbol. So, there. so, so Dark Eye had a thing similar to this on the the back covers, where they're like, here's a diamond that's a color, and it's like, okay, what the hell does that even represent? And it was later on that I figured out that, oh, like, that's the the level of effect that you have on certain uh, different areas, like the the history of the world and things like that by participating in the adventure. But even once I thought I had understood how to read it, I discovered like a week later I had been reading it wrong the whole time because the colors didn't mean anything, though the colors looked like they meant something. It like, was just whatever colors they choose to use at that's, that point. Yeah. It's frustrating for the sake of being frustrating almost. See, the only symbols I had a problem with in Dark Eye was your, you know, this is the queen symbol. This is the knight symbol. This is the pawn symbol. Those, they they don't show up. They don't register. Yeah, now those could be heavily implied from some of the stuff that's in the text, but yeah, that is Which a, that is a weakness. I can still live with that, yes, because it is implied. It's like, well, you know. Um, but when you start using it for basic, like, rules text, like, oh, this means you're, this is an attack, or this mean that's when it gets annoying. Like, oh, this person is, is important to the story. It's pretty easy to, you know, to infer from the context. But rules text is a completely different thing. I mean... Dark eye, or like uh, if it says blah blah blah, it's pretty easy to understand that that's an attack. Like dagger, you know that's an attack. You know what I mean? You don't have to. But they don't use symbols for any of that stuff anyway. So it's you know. Um, and you know, ranged attacks are completely different than because you know if it's a dagger attack that's ranged, it says thrown weapons because of the way they do it. So it's very easy and very very simply simple to understand. Um, like I said, with Starfinder, they did like all these symbols for, I think it was the Solarian. They did a bunch of symbols. So it's like, oh, this is the, this is the, you know, this is the solar one. And this is the dark, you know, the black hole one. And most of the time I can understand what they were saying, but it, not all the time. And then spells are different too, because they give you icons for the different classes for spells. Oh, this is a uh, a mystic and a technomancer. I think are the two different spellcasters, like, but I can't tell which one is which. Even they give me a symbol which reads as a number with my jaws and in in uh, Adobe Reader and stuff, but 
every time it reads the same symbol, it's a different number. So you can't, you know, you like can't even, it out. even an abbreviated shorthand would be better, you know, like, uh, well, like T one to six, that's Technomancer. M one to six, that's Mystic. Yeah, and I mean, like that's as something long that as they get some kind of stylized symbol for those things, I... and like a, an M, or like a dark M in the middle, or a dark T. I could perfectly understand it. Yeah, I guess that's. I just, I just assume have it like back in the old and olden days where it's like C E chaotic evil. Okay, now I know. You know, like just shorthand like that. Why you got to do fancy little di- like you got to pay the printing company more that, anyway. It's, so, it's not on all the things. I guess it's for spell for different spell classes. I'm making an argument for here for different- you. Ah. Why don't you shut up and let me do it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I completely missed what you were trying to, to convey there. So I was just that saying that they point. they had to pay the printers more to do that sort of bullshit, but that's probably not true in this day and age. Because a, a T is not any any worse than a symbol. I think it's probably easier to do than a symbol. You know what I mean? I mean, like, what do you hurt really by getting readability out there anyway? So well, the thing is with Starfinder, they did not have a play test. They did not have an open play test. So I couldn't get on the playtest and bitch and moan about it in the playtest because they didn't, you know, they didn't ask me. They just, a lot of the times sighted people just don't realize that there are blind people out there, which, you know, and I, okay, I, most of the time I can, I can live with it. You know what I mean? But when it comes to the only, you know, outlet I have to play things that I really enjoy, then I'm going to complain. And I'm hardcore in the, no symbols camp for Pathfinder 2.0. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I may have made... I have, to have a lot of people in that same camp. Sorry. I, I may have made the observation back in our first episode, I don't even recall now, where it's like a, a realization that hit me, and I even know you, was the, the point in time where they were talking about all these self-driving cars becoming more and more popular. I'm like, no, no, you're not going to take driving away from me, damn it. It's one of the few things in life I still enjoy. And... Then I I began to think is like well what if Mike had like self driving cars that could take him wherever I'm like wow I was just selfish asshole because I was only worried about driving myself places. <laughs> and see, they, I don't even think I want self driving cars because those things scare me right now. Because eh. it's it's not the cars itself that bother me; it's the other idiots on the highway. They're, that they're gonna get better, and like we're, I'm gonna steer you away from this tangent real quick. But I'm just gonna tell you right now, everybody: here's what you should be scared of: the talk that they're like, oh, in another five to fifteen years, we're gonna replace all the truck drivers with self-driving trucks. It's like you realize that's one of the main key jobs that's still left in the United States. That's yep. that's some scary crap right there. It's good. It'll be like, uh, what the hell was the movie with, um, are you going to bring maximum overdrive into this? No, not maximum overdrive. Uh, monkey pass. Uh, Oh yeah. Fifth element. Fifth element. Well, like well, they weren't, they weren't completely self-driving, self-driving no. there, but yeah, it's, it's getting but there. They, they like fired a million people with like no problem. That's the kind of thing you're going to yeah. get into. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, we better find the plot again or we won't oh, find yeah. it. <laughs> um, do so, a pause for the cause. We we were talking about screen readers was where we're at. And that's, there's So, Jaws. That's what I use for my screen reader. Um, there's other ones like Window Eyes, which I think is for Microsoft. But eh, I didn't really. I think Jaws is the number one in the market at this point. For a reason. Um, it, you can choose multiple voices. Um, you can you can assign different voices for different programs. So like, oh, Microsoft Word, I want Glenn, which is the one I use all the time for everything because I think it's the most inter- it's easiest voice for me to understand. But they have other voices. They have female voices, male voices, young voices, old voices. They have a bunch of different voices. Um, they also have a different program that assimilates even voices even closer. But I find a slightly le- a more computerized voice a little easier to basically understand, honestly. Um, you can also go into JAWS. It has its own library, its own pronunciation dictionary. So you can go in there and have it pronounce things the way you want to. 
I now, remember we had the you to do that, but yeah. We had the conversation about Batley Axe at some point, yeah, I seem Batley to recall. Axe. That was the bad one. <laughs> um that was by far the most annoying out of the bunch, and yeah, of course I fixed that as soon as I found it. Um but like a lot of the country names in Galarian are like, oh it's saying it. blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that just doesn't sound right. And I go through and I find, you know, people that actually pronounce it, like a lot of the developers that pronounce the names, and I try to get it to sound like they have. Now, you can't get it perfectly, but you can get it close. So that's what it is for Jaws. Um, now, something like else said, for can... people who partially cited um, is that they have marked down their uh, Magic and Magic Large print keyboards and yep. something else they're advertising on there. increase your text size if you want to do it that way. If yeah. You... Typically, um, typically, uh, if you still partially cited, I know that high contrast is a thing to be on the lookout for. Um, now, the there best, are... the best you want to do was blue black round with or white lighting or white black round with blue. But I can't remember. But blue and white is the best way to go for contrasting sake. Um, at least that's what it was when I was going go at first going blind. Blue, yeah, like I said, blue black round with white leather. That's the best way to go for contrast. Um, now they also have, uh, if, if you're going to go into the nerdy Linux end of things, which I figured why the hell not, but honestly, wherever you're at, probably Windows uh, is more popular more and going to be covered. Um, Windows works better with a lot of your blind software, honestly. There, there is a distribution of Linux that unfortunately is not fully up to date anymore called mm. Vinix that had a lot of high contrast background, things like that. Um, I can't say uh, off of hand that I would recommend it uh, just because it's been a while since it's been it's updated. Been since done anything like uh, it. 2017 in January, 2017 was the last update that we got. Um, however, there is also the Orca uh, screen reader, which does a job similar to Jaws that it was packaged with that that can be put on virtually any Linux distribution. So that's something that, uh, again, if you're uh, for some reason not getting your state funding, you might want to look into. Yep, that's, well, yeah, that's probably your best way to do it. I mean, because there are programs that automatically have, like Windows will actually read stuff if you put it in the, the talking mode. To be frank, their talking mode sucks ass. Yeah, I've toyed around with it in the past. It's not exactly the kind of thing I'd want to it's, read me a novel. <laughs> it's okay if that's all you have, but Jaws by because you can you can make it emphasize differently. You can make the you know you can make it read faster if it's reading too slow. You can do a bunch of things with Jaws. Jaws is great. Uh, unfortunately, it's a bit expensive the first time you get it. But if you're just going blind from, you know, whatever, uh, a lot of times the state will pay for it, and then you just pay to keep up the license. Like, for every, I think it's $120 a year to keep up your license, which isn't bad as long as you, you're making a decent amount of money on disability slash, you know, whatever the whatever kind of benefits are coming in for you from being blind. Um, I had paid, the last time I bought... Jaws, which is the most recent version, was Jaws 2018. I got a three-year license for 360 bucks, um, and it worked pretty well. I I love Jaws. I couldn't do anything. I've been I've been messing with Jaws since 2003, when it was Jaws six originally. So yeah, it works pretty well. And every year they keep coming up with new stuff. Like, I can put a DVD in, and it'll read the DVD to me now. You know, and it'll say, oh, yeah, this is... Because it'll read the picture on it. They've just come up... Some of the stuff is just amazing what they can do with it, honestly. Uh, honestly, I barely use any of the really crazy shit, though. I just go with, you know, the stuff I use all the time. Which yeah. is the, uh, you know, the, just the text recognition stuff. And frankly, that's really all you need to be able to survive. Now there's like really the go, the uh, virtual cursor and things like that, or things that you described before, where like Jaws curse. There's a Jaws cursor, and there's the uh, PC cursor, which is which is what I usually leave it on because it, you know, whatever point on the screen, that's where you're at. 
The Jaws cursor can jump around to doing different things. But you can freely go, because you use the numpad a lot with the Jaws. The insert key on Jaws, which is your zero key, I think, on the numpad. Correct. Um, insert whatever does a lot of different things. Because the way you got to realize with Jaws, you do a lot of keystroke commands kind of thing. So it's like, insert J will take you to this, or insert D will do this, or, you know. You just got to remember everything is a command rather than, because you, you don't use the mouse, use command keys to basically do the same functions that the mouse does while clicking on things. Which, I mean, a lot of times I can go a lot faster some, than some other people that are actually using the clicking mouse. I can go faster than they can. Well, incidentally sighted people, there's still limited navigation we can get with uh, just using the keyboard, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's more pain than it's worth. <laughs> you can do you can do the same things on the keyboard. Well, like I use the same functions that you do. It just I can't see, so I have to use them yeah. rather than clicking. But there's always some certain scenarios that I find where it's like uh, moving between the address bar in your browser to some specific box. Uh, there's another thing where where programmers. Here, here's a two second gripe with programmers: people who don't know what the hell tab ordering number need to quit like writing programs because you can thank jump you, everywhere you. on the screen. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Yeah. And right. like different headings and stuff like H brings you to a heading in the, in the thing. So if you have headings, if they're listed as headings, it'll automatically go to the next heading. So like, Oh yeah, this is Chile X, blah, blah, blah. Hit H button and go right to that. But it also, that's usually in, you know, like websites. Websites, a lot of the keystroke commands work better than saying like Word or whatever. Because to be fair, Microsoft is by far the best person for, for accessibility options for blind people. Uh, Google absolutely sucks massive ass. They don't do anything to help people, period. They they just suck. Um Mozilla Firefox is slightly better than Google. Uh, well, actually, eh, maybe 50% better anyways. But Google's by far the worst worst person in the world when it comes to accessibility. They're bad. They're just bad. Um, I mean, certain things that they've had around forever, because, you know, YouTube is a Google thing. YouTube is, has a lot of things that work pretty well with accessibility. But, like, uh, what was it? Google Hangout was that was the thing they did with it was like Facebook compatible. Was, yeah, uh, so immediately yeah, we Google we had Hangout a soft ball. Well, you say that because you had to drag and drop friends into different circles, and it's like, well, that obviously is not it's built for you. You cannot drag and drop. <laughs> they should have made a key. They should have made a keystroke command that didn't let you do that, but they didn't do that. Um. Well. If, if you're used to Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome or any of those things, you'll be fine. Um, I grew up with Microsoft uh, Explorer, so I'm familiar with the keystroke commands with that. Except, of course, uh, Microsoft Edge does not have the same keystroke command, so I want to track them down and beat them to death for that. But yeah. Um, just going to state right here for the audience's well-being that uh, Internet Explorer is an out-of-date browser, which you should not be using anymore, officially. It's, they're still doing stuff with it, but yeah. They're still doing stuff with Windows 7, but it's officially unsupported. Yeah, but I take Windows 7 over 10 any day of the week. Because I have, well, I have, uh, to be fair, on my desktop, I have Windows 7. On my brand new laptop, I have Windows 10. I've used my brand new laptop like three times because I cannot stand Windows 10. Because it's just, it's not, it's not intuitive the way they do things. It's completely different the way Windows 7 did it, and it's annoying. Well, I can uh, give you some insight into what I think happened there specifically, is a lot of the features that they threw out the window with Windows 8, you know, no pun intended there, but I just realized it, uh, 
the Windows 8 screwed up a lot of things because they were trying to do this hybrid for touch screens. Yeah. And then they realized that, hey, everybody hates how drastically we changed it. So for Windows 10, they're like, fine, we're going to give you these hybrid tiles that kind of do what 7 did, but also do what 8 did because we can't even ever admit that maybe we should have kept things the way they were. Anyways, uh, what was one of the other things? He, he, oh, he asked me about character sheets. I remember that. How do I do character sheets? Well, for me, I basically... Or did we talk about this already? We did talk yeah. about it a little bit. I brought up a little thing for my screen recorder uh, just so that I could show, like, with NPCs in particular. Like, it doesn't have to be super organized like if you want to meticulously organize it's it it's you. organized to, to a system where you can understand what's going on yeah like it can be just plain text in a file with the appropriate spacing uh i tried at one point to do it in excel spreadsheets but i found that actually gets too cumbersome and kind of weighs me down but, so eh. well like for me i i just do it in a word document um i put everything Honestly, I go from the best area entry. Um, I basically copy a best area entry over, and then I change it to fit what I do. Um, like my skills, I list them individually. It's like, oh, this is... I tell how many ranks I have in it. I tell my final modifier, that sort of thing, because it's easier to remember that sort of thing. But generally, as long as you make your own character sheet where you can understand and you have everything you need on the sheet, that's all you really need. Um, like I said, the hardest thing for me was rolling dice, and that, like I said, we do that with the dice roller. My favorite dice roller I use is called the Red Dragon Inn. They have a dice roller. Um, they only let you roll one type of dice at a time, so like a D20, it asks you how many times you want to roll it, if you want to add them together, blah, 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 if there's any modifiers, that sort of thing. Um, for me, when I'm playing Pathfinder, I usually just roll a d20. And then if I need damage rolled, I say, Hey, uh, you, Mr. Paladin guy, roll me three d6s and uh, whatever. And then I have them, you know, it's like, hey, this person does this, this much damage to this character. Um, for games like, um, what is the game we're playing now? Oh, uh, uh, The Dark Eye. For the Dark Eye, they only use two different dice types, so I just use, they only use D20s and D6s, so I just open two tabs of the dice roller, roll D20s on one and D6s on the other. And, uh, you know, I roll multiples simply because it's easier to, and then I, uh, like if I roll D20s, like, oh, I usually roll three D20s at a time for, 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 dra for Dark Eye. Because you need a lot of the skills, you need 3D20s. Then I just, once I hit the roll button, I hit the H button, which takes it right below where the dice rolls are, and I just go up two or three turns, and it'll tell me exactly which dice I roll. Um, normally, for the dark eye, you only need 2D6s rolled at any specific time, so I roll you know, 2D6s at a time, blah, blah, blah. Um, if it's a D6, I just go to the first one, block, re-roll it for the next one. Um, that works really well for Dark Guy. Like I said, Pathfinder is a little more difficult. There are dice rollers out there that roll multiple types of dice at the same time, and you can you know set it up to do that. But I find I found Dra uh, the Red Dragon Inn is by far my favorite dice roller. Because it seems, I don't know, I, just, I don't like it. It's it's very simple, it's very simple to use, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you can, all, you can open multiple tabs for the dice roller as well, or you can just keep changing your numbers in your, in, in your fields. Um, but I just like hitting the roll again button, and it just rolls everything I already had it to roll. <laughs> so that's what I use for the dice roller. Um... Another thing that comes to mind a lot of times for people is like the map. Like, oh, how do you use maps when you're playing, you know, individual, you know, pre-made adventures? Now, for that, I use my friend Morris here because um, I trust him. I, you know, <laughs> I, I trust all the, I trust all the people I play with, honestly, because most of them don't 
metagame, which is a great thing. So if I say, hey, can you look up and see what room we're in? Okay, we're in room six. And they'll, they'll go, oh, yeah, room six. We have two, you know, two access side of here. Now, if there's a secret room that goes out of the side, it, assuming they know what they are, because my friend Doug had to tell them what S over thing meant. But, yeah. Anyways. Uh, they'll, you know, it's like, well, yeah, there's two exits, obvious exits. And there's there's one to the north, and there's one to the south, and that's all they tell me. And one to and, Dennis. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's an error. You got to you gotta make the strong bad reference. Come on. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, you can go ahead. I think it was north, east, and Dennis. <laughs> north, sir. But yeah, I think they are east, west, and Dennis. I don't know. Either way, but yeah. <laughs> But no, another thing uh, while we're on the topic of metagaming is that um, we use Skype currently, um, yes. which oh, is <laughs> it's always up in the air. Uh, well, you know, some people don't game from distance, so I mean that's that's the thing to take into account too. True, but um, it, it's always up in the air of whether or not we're going to end up changing Skype depending on what privacy policies and all that sort of thing do. But one of the advantages that Skype has is that uh, with the way that it's recently coded for Windows, it does not uh, pick up sounds that come directly from your computer as readily as, as other communication programs so do. So if my computer is talking in the background, they do not hear the stats of the creature. Exactly. That was really rough sometimes. It's like in the scenario, of, I don't know, I don't know, and it's like, okay, now I need to really pretend hard that I didn't hear what Jaws just said to Mike so that I don't metagame this next room. Well, and before before it actually used to tell you everything that my computer said, I used to turn the volume way down so hopefully you guys couldn't hear it. But since they fixed it to where that's not, not an issue anymore, it's much easier to not you know dick around and deal with shit. Alternatively, headphones are also an option you might want to consider. <laughs> I thought about that too. But, uh, no, Mike has used headphones before and he gets super uncomfortable with them. That's why we don't. Well, my ears would sweat. And yeah, I'm not a sweaty person and I don't like sweating. So, you know. But after, well, after they fixed that, that was pretty cool. Oh. And again, it was like, not I can't like play music for, you know, the, the you know, play like gaming music for specific parts of like oh this is all ominous so i'm gonna play some ominous music i can't yeah. even do that anymore. so uh, and in one hand it's pretty cool because it's you know we don't have to dick with shit but on the other hand it kind of sucks because then i can't play gaming music which there's a program i'd actually like to do if i could which is sirenscape i think i've maybe mentioned this in one of the other yeah, I'm pretty sure we talked about it at some point. Yeah, I really love Sirenscape because they have some really good suites of music. And the and the Benjamin Looms, the guy that runs the thing, he's well, they're from Australia. And he's just a hell of a nice guy too. Like he at one point had messaged me and said, Hey, can I do something to make it easier for you to basically use the software? I never got back to him and I kind of feel bad about that. But yeah, it's like I was, just the, for him to actually make the attempt to try to make it easier for me to use was pretty cool. So I highly recommend, and he's just great with the sounds too. Some of those sounds are just ridiculously crazy. I think the uh, one complaint I had when we had uh, messed around with listening to uh, what was on Sirenscape was uh, the Goblin song in the one Pathfinder branch. Oh, I um, think I think we clicked on a couple of the. Uh, it, it was just too, their singing was too unintelligible, which I could tell why you would want that for background music, but it was a personal choice that, like, I just kind of wanted to understand them a little bit better. It was, yeah, it was slightly, maybe more than what he needed to do with that. But everything else I've seen has been brilliantly done. Because, like, some of the dragon noises and stuff I saw him do were like, wow, that's freaking amazing, honestly. So I, I highly recommend it if you can hear really well and you can understand and you can like click on stuff. That's the problem with Sirenscape. It's very hard to click on things to like I can get it to play the background music, but I can't like add extra sounds in the middle and stuff. 
So there is that. But it's it's still really well done for gamers. It work it probably work a lot better with us if we all got together and game, you know, around the table as well, too. You know what I mean? But it's very hard to put that over Skype as well. So but well, there's, there's that and then the fact that somebody for a wizard doesn't do a lot of planning ahead of time. <laughs> Shut up, you <laughs> plan ahead of time i know how you people think <laughs> see you see how he justifies it folks mm -hmm. i'm a wizard i know everything the only person i have to worry about planning ahead for is you morris because <laughs> you're the one that pulls shit out of your ass and go oh, i'm gonna do this i'm like fuck that's not in the adventure <laughs> it's like uh okay i'll let you do this for a little bit and it's like okay it's done <laughs> Yeah, like we were talking the other night when we were we were gaming that uh, there was one scenario that I had done to you that I can't even quite remember what it was, but there was like some tainted fae creature who was not even friends with the other enemies that were there in the dungeon. I started trying to strike up a conversation with it, and at some point Mike's like, uh, I don't know, he's bored, he attacks you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the dude from... Uh whatever, the, like I said, the Asian adventure one. Um, he was a fey creature, but he was uh, he was basically a prisoner of the chick. It was in the it was in the Lady's Light, which was in um, or maybe that was Shattered Star. That might have been Shattered Star, actually. I was thinking it was in uh, um jade whatever jade region but no i think it was in shattered star which was the most recent one we played no that wasn't the most recent one we played it's the the first one that doug uh w didn't play to completion <laughs> i still curse you for that doug as we we went from that to jumping to baba yaga and then we we just yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Bobby Yaga was the last one we did. Was the Winter's whatever. Winter's Heart or something like that. Yeah, but Shattered Star was the one we did before that, before we changed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was in the Lady's Light was where that happened. Because there was... The, uh, he was some kind of Fae something. I don't remember what he was. He was like Fae touched or he was... I don't know. But yeah, yeah, I, just, I, know exactly. I just figured if anybody here is going to be somebody I might actually be able to talk my way out of having to fight, like that would be it because he's clearly not friends with everyone else around him. <laughs> I remember exactly which creature it was at this point. I remember which, I don't remember what's the number of the room, but I remember, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much where we left off the last time we played was very, very close to that point. But yeah, that was in the Lady's Light, which was book number two of Shattered Star, if I remember correctly. Because that's the one with the giant statue with the girl with the, the you know, the, the flaming. It's sort of like the Statue of Liberty with the big flaming whatever. It was a staff rather than a torch. Oh, man. My mind immediately goes, did we forget what that statue has inscribed on it suddenly, magically? I don't remember, but yeah. <laughs> and I've read the entire thing. And uh, I can't... No, that's just a jab at the Trump people. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. That's always a good jab. <laughs> Unless they're followers. We love you. <laughs> yeah, that maybe won't make the final edit. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> no, I don't love you. If you're a Trump supporter, I'd be sorry. <laughs> I, I I respect your opinion. I just don't. No, oh, I don't even give you that. Well, I'm I'll, trying to be nice, but yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do the Jesus thing and turn the other cheek and show love to my fellow human, but no, you don't deserve my respect. <laughs> yeah, whatever. What else you want to hammer in this thing? Honestly, I can't think of anything else to go, so I don't try to think. Um, honestly, if... Uh, Reach out to the community if you need to know things. That's a great way of doing it. Um, 
trying to, I'm trying to think of the blind, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the blind organization that might be able to help you, but yeah. Well, there's the, the American Council for the Blind, there's the NFB, which is the National Federation for Blindness, which, I'm sorry, I don't really like NFB all, all that often, because they're a little bit of crazy people. I like the American Council for the Blind if you're going to go with things, but yeah. Um, a lot of those people you can find. And most people are, are willing to work with you. If, hey, I'm going blind. Can you help me out? They will try to find ways to help you. So, and if, hell, if you're the DM, you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want anyway. So there you go. Um, 90% of the time, I am the DM for our group, and most people don't seem to have a problem with it, so there's good there. I mean, Morris has been doing the... the uh, the Dark Eye stuff recently because he just wanted to try his hand at something and it was something new and so we were all kind of new at that one. And he's been doing a great job. Although I think I'm next in the line for DMing that one. Yeah, as soon as we finish up the last big adventure. so Yeah, there's only there's only the one left, right? No, uh, for what I had planned, yeah, but we already went too deeper than I thought we were going to because Kay couldn't make it to two sessions. Well, like I said, um... The next one I'm going to do is the Theater Nice campaign, which that's, from what I can see, in the next, but by the end of the month, or within the next couple of weeks, there'll be two more parts of that out. So I'm not really worried about that anymore. Um, I don't know. I think I'm a decent DM. I don't know. I ain't perfect, but hell, who is? Although with the Dark Eye, I'm going to try to do a little bit more crazy shit, so we'll see how that works out. Well, you know, it's uh, DM or players. I think the rules are vastly similar. It's like, no, you can't kill everybody. <laughs> well, I think when we start doing Dark Eye, when I run, I might actually get my brother to try to help me to do different voices and do and play different characters and stuff just for, because I think that would give him something to do and, you know, or maybe even have him join in and in, in to play with us, even. No, one of the things we're always saying, it's an easy system to drop in or drop out of. So. Well, and he, he really, he loved playing the card game, so... Yeah, because he whooped that? all our asses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to try... Well, like, that's one of the things I want to do with Origins. Oh, Origins is coming up, people, so we'll probably have some specials coming with that, by the way, but yeah. I will attempt to get them we out quickly. We will attempt to do some specials. I, oh, wait, this this no, from the guy who still has stuff that he didn't again. post from last time, but I will attempt before <laughs> I get overfaced. But yeah, I think, yeah, I don't know. I think we're going to have a good time at Origins because we always do. We will also probably, hopefully, give you news of what's going on with Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Which uh, Yeah, oh, we're going to do a play test of the 2nd Edition rules. So yeah, yeah, there you go. I am, after the the last couple of uh, blogs that they put out on Pathfinder, I'm like, oh boy, those look good. So, fighters look pretty amazing in this new system. Fighters and roads both look really amazing. So it's like, but I've never had a problem with fighters before, so eh, whatever. Anyways, we probably should digress and probably wrap this up for this evening. So, hi Mike. I'm Morris. Thanks for joining us. See ya. The theme music used for this podcast, Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions. You want answers? Email Mike under Volantrix at gmail.com. That's Volantrix spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X. What's shaking Sparky?